The most important thing we can do is establish what uh, people are really talking about when they're talking about mental training, mind skills, mental toughness. There's a lot of terms that are used to sort of describe this thing. And this thing is something that uh, athletes, coaches typically regard, uh, or they say they regard it as very, very important. But what I find is when I go to work with a group of athletes, I'll ask them point blank, um, you know, how important is the mental aspect of what you do for your sport? And they'll kind of look at me and I'll say, would you say it's at least 50% of the entire performance spectrum? And, you know, hands will go up and I'll say, is it more than that? Could it possibly be 60%? You know, hands will typically still go up. They're usually waiting to see where I'm going. And I'll say, okay, could it be even more than that? 75, 80%, even more than 80%? You know, some people will agree. Now, here's where that takes us. If the criticality of mental training is anywhere from 50% of everything that you do to even more than that, then it would stand to reason that we should be devoting some time to mental training. Yet when I speak to the majority of athletes, they will say, they don't have a plan. If I say, what are you doing now to uh, you know, bring that aspect of a performance into your training? They'll shrug their shoulders. They don't know. We all seem to intuitively understand that engaging the mind in the process of our training is an important thing to do. But most of us don't really have a plan or an idea of the proper way to start. So what we're gonna cover today is the proper way to start. So if we've established that developing mind skills is important, we really need to understand why they're important. The typical person, athlete, non-athlete, seems to walk around with a, a head full of thoughts and the perception that a lot of these thoughts are really sort of beyond the control of the end user. So if you notice that you know thoughts kind of come into your head, they leave your head, they stay for a while. but they don't necessarily seem to have any rhyme or reason. Uh, a lot of people sort of take that experience and they extrapolate from there, well, thoughts just happen to me. And we tend to experience those thoughts in a passive way. But what I tell people, particularly athletes, is that the thoughts in your head are something that you're really responsible for. If you can regard everything from the neck up as real estate that you manage, you need to manage that real estate well. And that means that you need to take an active role in the types of thoughts that you're allowing yourself to experience. Now that right there, that whole idea creates uh, some controversy because there are people who are absolutely convinced that everything that's going on up here is just like an endless movie that someone else is directing and they are just sort of uh, captive to those random thoughts. I disagree and my whole focus is teaching people how to take more of an active role in what is projected into your mind, actually taking control of the thoughts that you think because the thoughts that you think then have resultant emotions attached to them and then your behaviors are sort of guided by that combination of thoughts and emotions. So if you're not taking control of them, you're not getting everything out of your sport, you're not getting everything out of life that you could be. So understand before we really move forward into actual techniques and strategies, we have to accept this central premise. You can control to a large extent everything that goes on up here. No one else is in your head but you. So take command of it.